What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video. Now, with Scarlet and Violet being out in less than, you know, two months, I guess in a little over one month technically is a little bit better of a descriptor. Uh, what I want to do is uh, make a few more videos, just kind of getting you guys hyped up for it. But uh, the thing that I want to cover today is uh, Sarah B has been keeping track of all of the Pokemon that are uh, so far revealed to be available in the game, including old generation Pokemon, you know, like Golduck or uh, Arcanine and Cloyster and, you know, all the Pokemon, right? Uh, and what I want to do is uh, talk about how this Dex is looking to shape up as far as VGC goes. So, yeah. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon content, and answer my comment question of the day. What Pokemon do you really want to return in this uh, Dex, and do you want it to be good in VGC? I guess, you know, let me know. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So, as, uh, you know, as usual, we don't know a lot about the stats for these new Pokemon, so we can be a little bit inquisitive and, you know, assume some things about them, but for the most part, we'll be talking about older Pokemon returning. Uh, and discuss how I feel about their viability going into this game. But yeah, let's uh, let's talk about it. Actually, let me check something really quick. Let me check something really important, really important, really important, really important. Uh, da, 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 da. There's no Weezing yet. We don't know if Weezing's in. Okay, that could be kind of huge for something I want to talk about. But yeah, okay. So let's uh, ignore the starters, and we'll talk about the Fletchinder and Talonflame line. So... Talonflame is actually a pretty phenomenal Pokemon as far as regional decks go, uh, and it holds a very near and dear place in my heart because it's actually uh, the first Pokemon that I top cut a tournament with. Let me go to national decks. Uh, here we go. It's the first Pokemon that I top cut a tournament with, and that was in Gen 7 after they nerfed uh, Gale Wings. So Gale Wings used to be, uh, you know... Even if it isn't at full HP, the flying moves would always have plus one priority. So this thing had permanent priority Tailwind, Brave Bird, uh, Roost. You know, Roost is the thing you would do if you, you would run like a bulk up set. Uh, but for me, I remember uh, my set was it, was, it was really cool. So it was back when we had Fiery MZ in the game. I ran Tailwind, uh, Overheat, Taunt, and... Um, what was my last move? And Will-O-Wisp. And that was my set. And I had like this as my spread. And it was basically just meant to like one shot Celesteela with uh, a Z fire move uh, and set up Tailwind for the rest of the team. But uh, we now know that we have priority Tailwind within this format. Uh, so instant Tailwinds can be pretty amazing. I would assume that Talonflame is going to be top tier just by that alone. Like Talonflame is a phenomenal Pokemon and we can assume it's going to be great in the format, as long as there isn't any like straight up Talonflame counter that makes it completely unviable. But yeah, Talonflame definitely going to be a top tier within this VGC format just by virtue of there probably isn't a Whimsicott, I think. I don't think there's Whimsicott on here. And also there's definitely no Tornadus in the uh, in the regional decks. They tend to save that for uh, the national decks format. So yeah, Talonflame, we can just assume. Hound Hour, uh, it's not historically very great, to be honest. As far as fire types go, you can do a lot better. Or Hound, Hound Doom. Hound Doom is uh, not historically that great, but I could see it being okay. I mean, like, is Arcanine confirmed? Is Arcanine confirmed? I mean, Arcanine's confirmed. It's it's over for Hound Hour. So the thing is, like, Hound Hour is always... Hound Hour, I can't say it. Hound Doom is going to be consistently competing with Arcanine uh, for a spot as a fire type Pokemon. And they have like the same speed, Houndour. I'm gonna do this the whole video, aren't I? I have to stop talking about Houndoom soon. Houndoom has similar speed, but it hits a little bit harder on the special side. Um, but the issue is it doesn't have Intimidate, and while it does have access to like Snarl and like Dark Pulse, and it could be like a nasty plot Pokemon, generally speaking, Arcanine's probably gonna be the standard with like Will O Wisp, Flare Blitz. Um, I don't know, Protect. Uh, it could also get like Safeguard, which is something that's really really good for it so uh that is something that we have to keep in mind like arcanine is definitely going to be the standard like i we already have two top tier fire types in this format uh and that's just something to keep in mind like it's it's going any any fire type we talk about going forward uh is going to have to compete with them so yeah uh next up we have uh gyarados so gyarados is pretty interesting uh it's historically okay in regional decks formats uh mainly just because i mean i guess Maybe not, actually, now that I think about it. Um, hold on. Alright, 
So uh, it's it's historically good in regional decks formats. I think it saw some play in 2014, and it also definitely saw some play in 2017. Uh, it once again is a uh, intimidate Pokemon, and as a water type and a flying type, it pairs well with like any earthquake spammers. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, Dragon Dance is a thing that it can do. Waterfall is definitely going to be within its move set. Uh, by the way, I, I feel like I have to say this, like, I'm probably not going to talk about terrestrialization in this video, because it's such a, it, it's such a strange thing that we're not going to understand enough about until after the game releases, maybe a month after the game releases, uh, to talk about definitively, that for now, I'm just going to talk about, like, the Pokemon's viability. So yeah, Gyarados could turn into a grass type and do terrestrial power whip, uh, but we're going to talk about it as a Pokemon on its own. Because uh, you can only terrestrialize one Pokemon, you know, that, that, that's a thing. We have to keep that in mind. You can only terrestrialize one Pokemon. So we're just going to talk about what Pokemon will be 99% of the time. And Gyarados is going to be generally very good just with this set. Probably like a Life Orb. Or if there's like Spore Pokemon, then Safety Goggles is going to be pretty decent. Uh, Smoliv, a couple more regional Pokemon. Pikachu isn't something to really talk about. Raichu is probably going to be pretty good uh, just by virtue of being like a really great support Pokemon in VGC historically, and also if Gyarados is good, like Gyarados Raichu is obviously something that people will try to do at the beginning. You have Fake Out, you have access to that, plus like Dragon Dance uh, and like Setup, uh, and Lightning Rod keeps your Gyarados from getting uh, one shot by electric moves. Uh, so yeah, I mean like obviously Raichu is going to be pretty phenomenal. Wigglytuff isn't historically great, it's a competitive Pokemon, uh, so if Arcanine's good, maybe we'll see some Wigglytuff stuff. It really depends on the regional decks as a whole and how it shapes up. Uh, Venomoth we haven't seen in a while. Not historically a great Pokemon, but might see some usage if uh, the if the cards play out right for it. Uh, Dugtrio is a trapping Pokemon. It's a ground type. It could be the best ground type that we have for all I know. Uh, like there there are not many ground types revealed so far. So if <laughs> if uh, there's like no Excadrill, uh, we could actually see some legitimate Dugtrio usage, which is kind of cool. Uh, Persian not historically great. It's a fake out Pokemon. Golduck. Is Politoed or Pelipper in here? Hold on. Uh, Pel Pelipper is confirmed. Okay, so the return of Double Duck. Actually, wait, is Ludicolo confirmed? No. Is Kingdra confirmed? No. Okay. No, we have the return of Double Duck just by virtue of Golduck existing uh, in the same format as... Um, why can't I spell right? Sorry, you guys are having to hear that Windows noise. Uh, Golduck existing next to Pelipper, saying that we saw a lot in 2017. Uh, basically, it was uh, Watarium Z Golduck next to Tailwind Pelipper with uh, Drizzle. So it was like just absurdly fast. Pelipper was able to deal with uh, all the grass types by virtue of having 100% uh, accurate Hurricane. And Golduck was just like a monster of a Pokemon, hitting things with like Life Orb Hydro Pump, Life Orb Scald. Uh, depending on what you wanted to do, had access to ice moves. And I know I said we wouldn't talk about terrestrialization, but if there's a terrestrial Pokemon, if there's going to be anything terrestrializing, I think if we're going to see Double Duck, water terrestrialization Golduck to boost the power of its moves is going to be a pretty devastating one. So it's definitely going to be, I would say, unless like we have Grassy, Gly Grassy Glide Pokemon, probably a top tier. Um, didn't I already cover Arcanine? Or I guess I, I like skipped over to Arcanine. Uh, but... Let's see. I might like skip over some Pokemon I don't think are going to be good. Uh, Slowbro, it depends. It's like a decent Trick Room Pokemon. It, it heavily depends if there are better Trick Room options. Like if Dusclops is in this format, probably no Slowbro. Uh, if there are just like really oppressive ghost type Slowbro, probably isn't that good. Uh, Cloyster did see some mild usage in VGC 17 uh, when that was a thing. When that, that was like our last normal regional decks. You know, it didn't have like Dynamax or anything. Uh, so. It could be good. It really depends. Uh, Gengar is usually a solid pick. Uh, Gengar is the type of Pokemon that does well in pretty much any format you need it to. Focus Sash, uh, Sludge Bomb, Shadow Ball, uh, Trick Room, and like Will-O-Wisp is like not a bad set usually. Uh, you're unable to fake out this Pokemon because it's Ghost type, and while it is fast, and it like you know a lot of people say, but but Moxie boosted, Marcos boosted. Uh, why are you running max speed Trick Room? That is a very common thing. Believe it or not, max speed Trick Room is a very common thing. Like people expect this thing to want to just go for attacks. Being able to set up Trick Room on like the turn it goes down is like, or the turn before it goes down is pretty huge. So that is probably going to be a set that you see. Hypno, I don't expect to be good. I actually forget, does Hypno get Fake Out? I feel like it does, but I also feel like it doesn't. 
It does not. Okay. Chansey, um, I'm just gonna say prepare for hell if Shuckle is in this dex. Alright, no confirmed Shuckle. Wait, is Carbink? Okay, no confirmed Carbink. If there's something with guard split and a good defensive stat, Chansey will be a thing next to it. Um, that is a, a strat that we have seen many, many years in a row. The EVs are nothing to write home about. We basically have Sylveon confirmed, so obviously Sylveon's gonna be top tier. Uh, at least for what we assume, you know, we, we can assume right now it's probably going to be top tier. Uh, Dragonite is historically not like the best in regional dexes, but uh, it, it is a pseudo legendary and it did get a pretty big buff this uh, recent gen. Uh, while usually you would see Dragonite run like multi scale and just set up, uh, Inner Focus isn't bad either. Like being unable to flinch or fake out it means that, like, you know, Dragon Dance, um, Dragon Dance, like Dragon Claw. Uh, extreme speed and like earthquake is a pretty viable set, and it might be a good Terrasta Pokemon for all we know. Uh, Ampharos not historically great. Azumarill, this is something that I'm terrified of. Azumarill is in the game, so I talked about this in the last video. Uh, but Azumarill is a Belly Drum Pokemon that it has access to Aqua Jet, and it's a Fairy Water type. And we have uh, this guy up here. It's the end of the world. It's actually the end of the world. We have Cyclozar, who has a move that will give. It'll take half of its HP, make a substitute, and then automatically switch it out. So you can use it like twice per battle max, unless you have like a Citrus Berry, I assume, and it automatically passes that substitute over to something. And if this thing passes a substitute into Azumarill, it's over. It Belly Drums. It Aqua Jets. It wins. Like the the only weaknesses that Cyclozar has, Azumarill just eats. It resists or is immune to all of them. So, end of the world, um, everyone say your prayers. Uh, Pseudo Wudo, probably bad. Jumpluff, not not terrible as like a chlorophyll Pokemon, believe it or not. Um, I believe he gets Strength Sap, right? It does get Strength Sap. Uh, it's like a Strength Slap, Sleep Powder, Tailwind Pokemon. Usually it gets Tailwind. I don't think it's... Or actually, does get Tailwind? I don't know. I feel like it got Tailwind in a previous format, but I guess not because it's not showing up in National Dex. But yeah, um, sometimes you don't run an item on it and you just go with Acrobatics because its other flying moves are uh, Dudu Kaka. So yeah, not not the best, not the worst either. Sunflora, it's bad, but it might get an evolution. Who knows? Umbreon, definitely way better than Espeon. It is historically pretty decent because, uh, for one, it can't be flinched. It, it can't be flinched because of Inner Focus, uh, but it gets really cool tools like Taunt, Snarl, Yawn is a really big one, Foul Play, it doesn't need to invest anything to hit things hard, so that's cool. Prankster Murkrow, that's, it's, it's the other Prankster Tailwind, it's the Prankster Tailwind, or it's, it's the, uh, it's the priority Tailwind that we have at home. Could be pretty decent, though. Skipping over these guys, they're not that great. Scizor, probably not bad in the absence of Incineroar, but with Arcanine around, it could be an issue for it. Uh, Scizor is obviously a historically great Pokemon. It gets access to stuff like uh, Sword Stance, Bullet Punch with um, with a, a Technician, so it hits really hard. And actually, Arcanine was a pretty big part of the BDSP VGC meta that we played for a little bit. Uh, it was unofficial, but a lot of VGC players played it. And even in the event of Arcanine existing, uh, Scizor was still quite good, so yeah. Uh, Ursa Ring implies that we're probably going to get Ursa Luna, so Ursa Luna is kind of insane. I really hope that uh, this thing is included in the game, but uh, yeah, it is a monster of a Pokemon, uh, just conceptually. We haven't seen it do anything yet, but let me tell you something. Here's all you need to know. Flame Orb Guts. You are immune to all status, so you don't have to worry about being like spored by or spored or sleep powdered. And then you have one of the strongest facades in the game because it's 140 base attack. This thing has legendary Pokemon stats, but it's just slow. Like I am excited to use this guy. Don fan, nothing to write home about. Nothing to write home about. Blissey's bad when we have Chansey and Eviolite. Tyranitar is historically great. I mean, like Tyranitar is like one of the VGC Pokemon. So just taking a look at that, like you already know what it's going to want to do. It can be a rock slide Pokemon. It can run Dragon Dance if it wants. It can be like an Assault Vest Pokemon and just like hit things with like Crunch and uh, high horsepower and such. So it's good. Obviously, like it depends if there are Sand Rush Pokemon next to it. But for now, you know, we'll just assume it's decent. I already talked about Pelipper. Gardevoir is probably going to be like fine. It's going to be kind of similar to Gengar and that's probably going to be like Sash Trick Room. Uh, Breloom, a Spore Pokemon. Breloom is historically one of the coolest Pokemon ever. Uh, it is true, many people are talking about this. Uh, but it has, uh, the, it has access to Spore, which is gonna be really cool. Spore, 
Probably like a Focus Sash, maybe a, a Choice Scarf, that's another thing that would run before. Uh, but yeah, you just do like Jolly. This. Loaded Dice is an item that it might want to run, but I would imagine you just do like, you know, typical Bullet Seed, um, Mock Punch, Protect, maybe even Substitute. Who knows? It's a good Pokemon. It's, it's always going to be good. Slacking, it depends if Weezing makes it in. We don't know if Weezing's in yet. If Weezing's in, Slacking is absurd. Slacking is actually usually better than Regigigas because uh, where Regigigas has to have Weezing on the field at all times to be good, Weezing only has to be on the field every other turn for Slacking to do stuff. So that is something huge. Um, Hariyama is always a great VGC Pokemon in, uh, in regional dexes. Uh, we saw it do absolute insane work in the unofficial BDSP meta, uh, but basically it is another Flame Orb Guts Pokemon. Don't worry about any kind of status, no Spore or nothing. Uh, fake Out, it gets knockoff naturally, one of the few Pokemon that get knockoff naturally. Uh, close Combat is an absolute menace to switch in on, and it does get stuff like Wide Guard, so it's going to be great. Also, that Speed Stat is pretty decent for Trick Room stuff, and it's super bulky. Oh my god, the way that the EV spreads that you would see on this thing were absurd. Let me see if I can find one. Uh, this is a team that I ran a while ago. Oh, wait, that's not it. Hold on. Yeah, or I guess this isn't like the most absurd EV spread, but you, you will see some crazy EV spreads for Hariyama just because it is Hariyama and it has like that really high HP and really low defenses. So like you just, it, it's, it gets crazy. But uh, yeah, Sableye, it's a support Pokemon. Fake Out, uh, Prankster Pokemon, but Fake Out, Quash, uh, Foul Play, Will-O-Wisp, all that's going to be great. Metacham might be decent. If depends on like how good fighting types are. I mean, Metacham's usually not that great. Um, it kind of got carried by its Mega, and in BDSP, we almost never saw it. Torkoal, phenomenal Pokemon. Uh, if Venusaur is in this game, or if we have any kind of Chlorophyll Pokemon, like I think Vileplume might be in. I don't know. If there are Chlorophyll Pokemon and Torkoal exists in the game, actually, is Lilligant in? Lilligant is. Or we have Lilicole. Uh, it's gonna do after you eruption and sleep powder. It is going to be a good Pokemon. Uh, don't at me. These guys are bad. This guy's probably not that good. Zangoose, it needs an evolution. Viper is not going to be good. Tropius, not good. Salamence, it's definitely going to be good. I mean, Dragon Dance, Intimidate, um, the works. It has a lot of tools at its disposal. Staraptor is going to do Staraptor things, most likely. It's going to want to go for, like, Choice Scarf, Max HP, Final Gambit, Brave Bird, Close Combat sets. Um... These guys are usually pretty mid. Pachirisu will do the Pachirisu thing where everyone thinks that they're going to roleplay a Sage and Park for the first couple of uh, weeks of the metagame and then realize that uh, that really only worked in Gen <laughs> in Gen 6. Uh, Driftblim depends on if we have any terrain Pokemon. Uh, if it has access to seeds, it can eat the seed and then be a Tailwind Mon. Honchkrow, as much as I want it to be top tier, it's going to be mid. Bronzong, probably top tier. Uh, Bronzong is one of the best Trick Room Pokemon ever. Uh, and having access to just like, you can do like safety goggles, or probably not safety goggles, but like leftovers. Trick Room. Sorry if I could type. Trick Room, Iron Defense, Body Press, and like Hypnosis if you're crazy, even Protect if you want. This set goes crazy. It, it walls things out. It's, it's very annoying to deal with. So yeah. Riolu has access to Prankster Coaching if coaching is uh, given to it as like a TM move or if there are move tutors in the game. Lucario uh, could be decent, not the best fighting type. It does have inner focus though, so that's pretty decent. Hippowdon, kind of competing with uh, Tyranitar. However, it did already compete with Tyranitar in Dynamax formats at the beginning of uh, VGC 2020, and it still found usage. It was like a really decent Pokemon with Body Press, Yawn, uh, Sandstream stuff. So, Obama Snow, the only Hail Setter I believe we know right now. Weavile is probably not going to be that bad. Uh, a lot of these Pokemon we're coming up on are kind of mid. I already talked about Lilligan. Crocodile, probably going to be okay. I mean, it's an Intimidate ground type. There are other ground types um, that we could be using. Obviously, there's no Landris, so Intimidate ground type is actually a pretty open uh, role on a team that you could go with it right now. Uh, Zoroark, it's going to be Zoroark. You can never really tell how good it's going to be, but it's usually a gimmick. Hydreigon. Oh, this thing's going to be insane with terrestrialization. I don't want to get into it, but like it can turn into a levitating steel type with access to flash cannon and just boosting that move's power. So that's a thing. Um, and just generally as like a dragon type, you could do worse than this thing. Like it is 98 base speed or 97 or something like that and really high special attack. Um, if I can remember how to spell it, Hydreigon. Yeah, 125 special attack, 98 speed, 
really good bulk. It does it does the work. Ah, I might I might use this in Spike Myth Cup. I kind of want to build Hydreigon now, but yeah, great Pokemon. Floor just we haven't seen in a while. Does Floor just get Trick Room? Does Floor just get Trick Room? I don't know. I, it does not. But I haven't seen that thing in a long time. Uh, pretty bulky on the special side. Uh, not the best Pokemon though. Uh, I guess all you can really say for it is like, hey, you know, Flowerville, grass types can't have its stats lowered or inflicted by other Pokemon. Pretty cool. It's it's mid. Go Goat, my goat, LeBron James, um, the Bronze Age. Uh, Go Goat's gonna be okay. Yeah, it's a grass type. There aren't too many good grass types in this deck from what I've seen so far. I guess you could run like a bulk upset with Horn Leech. Basically, Tapu Bulu, but without grassy terrain. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> Sylveon already said it was going to be pretty good. Uh, Gudra is probably just going to be like AV Gudra. We see it do the same thing in every regional decks. It runs AV and coverage moves. Being immune to Spore with uh, Sap Sipper is pretty cool. Uh, and that allows you to run a more threatening physical set. So it could fit on a couple of teams. But as a special attacker, it's probably better. Uh, you know, Flamethrower, Draco Meteor, Ice Beam, Sludge Bomb, that kind of coverage. Noivern is pretty interesting. Uh, Frisk is actually a really great ability, being able to identify items on lead, uh, while also having one of the fastest Tailwinds in the game. Uh, while it's not as fast as Prankster Tailwind or uh, Gale Wings Tailwind, it's up there. Uh, and it's got to be respected, because not every team will want to have a Talonflame, not every team will want to have a, a Murkrow, and this thing is probably the next best thing beyond those guys. It's probably better than Murkrow, actually. I would say this is like the second best Tailwind of the game. Oracorio, nothing to write home about. Loses to Rock Slide pretty handily. Uh, Lycanroc, probably not that great. Who knows? Toxapex is not historically great in VGC, but you can make it work. Uh, Mudsdale, usually okay. Usually okay, you can get away with it. Stamina is a really cool ability, but also having access to inner focus to not be able to be flinched or intimidated now is pretty big. You can choice band it, go for like high horsepower. Uh, and yeah, Lorantis is probably going to be amazing as a grass type. Uh, just because of the contrary, uh, contrary superpower, Leaf Blade, or even like Leaf Storm sets, Zarina is probably the best grass type in the format. Actually, uh, it is. If we don't have Psychic Terrain in the regional decks, uh, then this thing is going to be like pretty much standard. <laughs> Uh, it has access to U-turn, Trop Kick, High Jump Kick, Triple Axle maybe if that's like a tutor. Uh, and it's just always great. Oh, it has like, and it's really bulky and has like decent speed and really high attack. I think this is one of like the best Pokemon I've ever made that always gets slept on until people realize how busted it is mid, mid generation. So, uh, Komala, probably not that great. And now we're getting into Gen 8. So, Greedent, if there's no Snorlax, this is the Belly Drum Trick Room Pokemon. Colossal, it has to use Terrastalization, Rock Slide plus Aqua Jet to do anything, um, in my opinion. I think Flapple is going to be pretty bad without Dynamax because it kind of relied on that to bypass the Hustle Accuracy drop. And Appleton can actually be fairly decent. We actually talked about this on the Route 1 podcast the other day. Uh, but Appleton is kind of like Ferrothorn, but different. Uh, it has access to Thick Fat to help you eat those uh, ice moves, but you could also do something like a... Uh, Probably not gluttony, maybe you could, nah, probably just thick fat, but you would go with like, uh, leftovers, uh, iron defense, body press, leech seed, apple acid, and maybe you would drop like apple acid for protect, and it depends on that, but it's, it's actually like decently defensive, it's got 110 HP, 80 defense, if you set it up enough, it, it can be a bit of a menace, and it also beats Ferrothorn 1v1 if Ferrothorn gets, uh, added to the decks. These guys are pretty mid. Hatterene's probably going to be top tier, though. One of the most reliable Trick Room setters due to Magic Bounce, and it has a really decent special attack stat. Psychic Fairy is also not that bad. Pink Urchin is Terrain. That is our first confirmed Terrain so far, because uh, it has Electric Surge, but we'll have to see if they maybe add some new Terrain setters in the decks, or if there are some uh, Terrain setters that haven't been um, revealed yet. Uh, if every terrain setter makes it in, that means that Weezing gets in, so that is that is pretty good. Uh, that means that uh, slacking will be decent. Stonejourner might actually be good in a non-Dynamax format, who knows. Ice Q, not historically great, and Kaparaja could be okay. It's like a sheer force trick room Pokemon. It has access to pretty low speed set and pretty powerful attacks, so it really depends on how good the other steel types are. Uh, but as of right now, it's facing very little competition as far as steel mons go, just like Bronzong and like one or two other ones, so who knows? Uh, but yeah, those are my thoughts on all the Pokemon that we've gotten confirmed for the deck so far and how good they're probably going to be in the decks. Obviously, this is going to depend on what else gets uh, included, but this is a pretty substantial dump of Pokemon. Uh, we have a good idea of what's going to be viable and what isn't based off of just their history in VGC, but obviously the yet-to-be-revealed Pokemon could 
put a hole in their plans. So yeah, let me know, let me know what you guys think in the uh, comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.